Let's start with two ordinary snare and overhead tracks. I'll start by adding Peak Rider to the overhead track and then bussing the snare track to Peak Rider's sidechain input and changing the send to pre-fader. You can already hear Peak Rider working in its default state. Peak Rider defaults to exact mode with 24 dB gain range. Starting with the basics of the plugin, down here are the timing controls. Hovering over any control shows a small description down at the bottom of the interface. In exact mode, Peak Rider analyzes the level, or volume, of the sidechain and main inputs and applies boost, or cut, to the main signal to match its level to the sidechains. The timing controls affect the properties of the detection. Increasing the decay knob emphasizes sustain. Decreasing it de-emphasizes sustain. The attack knob affects the smoothness of transients. And the trans knob controls how much of the main signal's transients to retain. Choosing different values for the trans and decay knobs can create transient or sustain emphasizing effects. Choosing similar values for the two controls will keep things sounding a little more natural. The range knob controls how much gain Peak Rider is allowed to use to modify the signal. Turning it up allows Peak Rider to have a greater effect. And remember, we're only listening to the overhead track. Let's switch Peak Rider to multiband mode. The left and right timing controls, which were disabled a moment ago, have now been enabled. In multiband mode, the sidechain and main signals are split into discrete bands and processed independently. Each band can be soloed, muted, or bypassed. Let's switch Peak Rider into duck mode, a very powerful tool for drums. In duck mode, Peak Rider can subtract or add the sidechain envelope from the main signal. The amount of addition or subtraction is controlled by the band's gain handles in this mode. The multiband crossover frequencies are controlled by these vertical bars. By boosting the gain on the high band, we can change how bright the snare is. Or make it darker by cutting. Now the midband. Peak Rider gives us full control over the tone of the snare in the overhead track. Adjusting bands with high frequencies to lower timing is usually appropriate. Not only can you affect the equalization in this mode, you can also affect the stereo image. Switching the stereo mode from link to split allows the left and right channels to be processed independently. Now, by panning the sidechain send to the right, we can duck the snare in the right channel only. With this, it's now possible to center an off-balance snare drum. Bypassing the low and high bands will leave the kick and cymbal regions unaffected. You can also fix an overly ringy drum by pushing the crossover frequencies together. Right-clicking on the filter view brings up the filter settings window. This window has a variety of advanced controls for visuals and for filter settings. Here we can change the crossover frequency slope between 6, 12, and 24 dB per octave. There's also a switch for enabling linear phase multiband crossovers. Clicking the back button closes the filter settings window. To add to the possibilities, Peak Rider also operates in mid-side mode. By panning the snare send back to the middle, and switching from left-right to mid-side mode, we can now control how much snare energy is in the center channel. Boosting emphasizes the snare's power in the center channel, while cutting widens the snare's stereo image. We can also affect just the side channel by duplicating the snare track and inverting the phase of one of the channels, we can create a side channel only snare to send into Peak Rider. Now, by ducking the midband, we can push the snare into the middle and make it mono. And by boosting, we can emphasize the snare's wideness using the natural ambience of the overhead track. <laughs> 